a little bit. Welcome to you online, and thanks to Bob and Janet for hosting our online Zoom community tonight, because I'm here, and Pastor Liz is not. We hope, we hope she's having a good spring break at home. Sorry, I feel like you should have weather warnings, but anyway. I just want to uh, set up for tonight what we're going to do before we go into holy evening prayer. For those of you that were here last night, last time you remember, we're going to do a die, deeper dive into the Beatitudes that we preached on a few weeks ago. And we're tonight going to look at Beatitude number six. Blessed uh, are the pure in heart, for they will see God. But we're going to do this through maybe a little different way, a little more interactive than we do on Sunday morning worship. This is not a Bible study on that beatitude. We're not going to learn all the things of Greek and Hebrew and all the the context of that. We're going to do this more as a faith practice lab where we're going to have conversations. We're going to do actually a spiritual practice of being quiet, hence why we have the lights out today. We're going to set up our time with a short video um, that uh, sets up our thinking tonight. And then we're going to, after we do this video and some um, quiet time, have some conversation. So I invite you to take a deep breath. Inhale and exhale. And Lord, we invite you into this space, into this community, that we may indeed see you. Maybe we see you in our reflection, maybe we hear you in the video or in a conversation, or maybe we just sense your presence with us tonight. Lord, bless this time so that we may be followers of you in a more fully way in this Lenten season. Amen. We're going to start by watching a video. A young child cannot hide what they're thinking or feeling inside. You'll know immediately when they are afraid, excited, sad, or surprised. But over time, we learn not to show our real thoughts and feelings. There comes to be a divide between what's in our hearts and what we're willing to show to others. We experience our separateness and become fearful and divided. We hide behind a mask or persona. What would you think if you really knew who I am? Whatever's inside of us eventually comes out, no matter how hard we may try to cover it up. Put your hands in front of your face and consider this question. What mask do you wear? What's important to you about how you present yourself to the world? We wear masks for a reason. Not everything inside of us is what we would want it to be, but hiding or denying our mixed motives doesn't make them go away. Neither does shame help us change or cynicism help us heal. With this beatitude, Jesus invites us to show our true selves and to believe in the possibility of our own goodness. If our idea of the divine is rooted in disapproval, it's hard not to hide. But a God who is love sees us truly and calls us to integration and wholeness of heart. Purity of heart is being honest about what's inside. We give up trying to be perfect and show the real you. When we are honest about ourselves, with others and with God, we step out of the shadows and into the light. And light transforms everything it touches. It reveals, heals, and purifies. Hold up your hands again in front of your face. Now move your hands away so that you can be seen. Show the real you. What's inside of you is seen and held with tenderness. We are invited to step further into the light, to be authentic, wholehearted, and divided no more. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. 
so today, we drop our masks. We show our true selves. Standing in the light, we choose goodness, and we walk in the way of the right motive. Tonight, our practice is called the examine. And before I introduce the practice, I want to set something up for you. The Hebrew story of Adam and Eve illustrates for us the human loss of innocence way back in the garden in Genesis. See, Adam and Eve, you may recall, ate the fruit of knowledge, and they now had their eyes open to good and evil. And it not only changed them, but it changed humanity after them. Eating that fruit, they realized that they were being seen, all of them. And their impulses couldn't be hidden from the divine presence around them. In this story, it's important to remember that it wasn't God who pulled away, but it was humans. God expected to continue to walk with them in the garden. And God even called out, where are you, Adam and Eve? And they're the one that hid. They're the ones who made God into the judge. And they began to live with the illusion that God was there to judge them. And they tried to hide what was in their hearts. We too can relate to Adam and Eve, can't we? The ability to hide our thoughts or attitudes from God because maybe we think God's going to judge us. But here's the deal. God sees us, all of us, and loves us as we are. So this practice of the examine is a way for people that seek God, that seek to follow the creator of the universe into everyday life and invite God into our inner being. In Psalm 139, it says this, Search me, God, and know me. Know my heart and test me. Know my anxious thoughts. And see if there is any offensive way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. That's what we're about here tonight. We're going to practice examine this time of being quiet and being present and opening ourself to God. And here's how it works. You find a quiet, dark place. Oh, we're there. (laughs) Maybe light a candle to remember that God is in our midst. Maybe you're going to want to close your eyes and and lessen the distractions. Maybe you want to sit in a way that's comfortable and open your hands to receive God or to just give a posture of being open to whatever will come your way. We're going to spend about 10 minutes, an uncomfortably long 10 minutes, perhaps, for some of us. But just open yourself. Let anything that's in your mind enter and let it go. And just open yourself to receive what God has to say. Here's some things that might, you might ask. God, what does my heart most deeply long for right now? What does my heart most deeply long for? Or what feelings, thoughts, and needs do I have in this moment? If you want a mantra, you can breathe in Search me, O God, and breathe out, know my heart. So I'm just going to set my clock for 10 minutes. Open yourself, and then we will come back and have some conversation.
I'm going to invite you to slowly come back to this room. And here's two questions that I'm going to invite you to share with one or two other people. What was it like to just sit in quiet? And did you have a sense of God's presence in some way in that? And the answer, it's okay to say no, by the way. There's no right or wrong answer. So I'm just going to give you three minutes, three to four minutes um, to do that. As, and we'll, Sherry, will you turn a little bit of lights on so you don't have to sit in the dark? And then um, I'll signal and we'll begin our hold an evening prayer. Thanks to God, it is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hear these words from Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24 again. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Those are super important words for me as I have an image uh, of the church that I used to serve at for 16 years, they did a musical every year. And one of the first years, one of this amazing drama students was a senior, recited by memory that whole psalm in just a powerful way. 
and it has left its impression on me all these years. But if I'm honest, I don't really like them. Right? Search me and know me. Where are my anxious thoughts? Test me. Find the offensive way in me. Not rotten it. Right? <laughs> and yet, what if? Today we're talking about masks. And I wonder, we all wear them, by the way. What are your favorite masks? Here's a couple that I thought of. Let's just say some of them I've worn before. <laughs> the superhero. This one comes with a cape. I can do it all. All by myself. Kind of like that four-year-old, right? All by myself. I don't need anybody else's help. I got it all under control. Or maybe it's the kind of professional, I have my life all together. Similar thing, but a different version. I'm not going to let my flaws show. I'm not going to dare be vulnerable with anyone. I got my life all together. You know that mask? You don't have to raise your hand if you've worn it before, but... <laughs> or another mask. I'm the helper. Now, some of these masks are really good. We got a couple helpers around here, right? Right? I'm always, though, the one who listens and maybe never the one who shares. Or maybe I'm going to focus on everyone else's needs and never tend to my own. No one would have that one, right? Or the super doers. Just keep busy and keep going so I don't have to stop and reflect. I don't need to get emotional. I don't know, let things penetrate deep below the surface. I'm just going to keep it up here. And if I keep moving, it'll just go away. What's your favorite mask? You don't have to turn to your neighbor and share, I promise. But what is it that you put on so the world sees your best side and you can keep buried deep the parts you just don't want to share? You see, the world encourages us to be mask wearers. When someone asks, how are you doing? How many times do they really want to know? When things are going bad, are you really willing to share? Why do we walk around with masks? Because frankly, it's scary to let our true selves show. Been bullied as a kid, been made fun of at work, had people call me names in the neighborhood, whatever it is. We've created masks as a way of life. And the world encourages us to wear those masks. Maybe you can't take your mask off 24-7. But what if there were places, people, communities, that for just a little bit of time, you could come and let the mask come off. I think we, as the community of LCP, desire, want to be such a community. And I see glimpses. I see glimpses in our prayer request you know, my life's hard right now because somebody's hurting and it's hurting my heart. Or I'm so joyful, I just can't sit still, right? It can be all the extremes. I want you to think about three reasons why it's good to take our masks off. And don't worry, they don't each come with a long sermon. First, 
We need to be honest with ourselves. And I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm wearing my mask at work or I'm wearing my mask around certain groups of people, I forget to take it off when I get home. And I start living under the illusion that that is me. I need places, you need places where you cannot be all together, where you can get in touch with the brokenness, the confusion, the questions that you have, and to invite God into that space and believe it's going to be okay. So one, we need to be honest with ourselves. Second, when we let God see us in that mess, in that brokenness with those thoughts we don't really want to have, the way we don't really like our neighbor, but we know we're supposed to love our neighbor, but they're really a jerk sometimes. But when we let God see all of us, there's a freedom to let God love all of us, not just the good parts. Maybe you have a person that knows all of your stuff and loves you anyway. Imagine God multiplied by 100. Letting God see us frees us to let God's love flow on us and believe that we're loved. And last, Letting others see our brokenness helps us live without secrets. Secrets are a great way to, re, to um, tear apart communities and relationships. But authenticity and honesty and letting people see our brokenness and asking for forgiveness when we screw up, that's part of what letting our mask down lets us do. So today, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And they will see all of God's creation as beloved and beautiful, even in the mess, even in our brokenness. People of Lutheran Church of Peace, you are God's beloved. Let your mask down and let God see all of you so you can see the enormous amount of love that God has for you. Amen.
The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O oh heart. shall bear a child and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices is in you. You have wrought with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty are you, O Holy One. Strong is your kindness evermore. How you favor the weak and Praise you, 
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. our God, praise and thanks to you. May God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Go in peace and serve the Lord.